Welcome to another neutral look in my series here on YouTube using my Petmograd palettes to only create some of more neutral looks or at least what I interpret to be some of more neutral looks. I think today's choice might be up for debate. I'm starting off a little bit earlier today and we're going to start with uh, Oryx Glow Last which I'm going to apply underneath my eyes for a bit of hydration and illumination and then we're going to test a new concealer together. I will tell the story probably in my monthly roundup but basically the gist is I don't have the Clarins concealer anymore. I had used already a bunch of it and I was really unhappy the last you know months that I have been using it because I feel like the color was off and it was drying out my under eyes a little bit more than I like. So basically I don't have that concealer anymore. I did not finish all of it. It was about two-thirds gone uh, but I was just like forcing myself to use it and like really not enjoying the process as much. Like starting off it looked really well but throughout the day it would just really make my under eyes look super haggard so I wasn't really enjoying myself. And mind you I have the world's shittiest under eyes because I have like a little bit of darkness here in the very inner corners like I have like very like I think deep like set eyes and a lot of like darkness here. I have some veins popping through here and here like and those like popping through really doesn't bother me as much as the fact that most concealers just suck the living life out of the skin of my under eyes. I've never been someone who thinks that the skin underneath your eyes is different than the rest of the skin on your face so you don't really need a special moisturizer for that. Fuck no, I was wrong. My under eyes are so much drier, like the skin there is so much thinner, more sensitive and prone to dehydration than the rest of my face. So I do actually use a special cream, like a super mega hydrating cream uh, underneath my eyes. And that is also the reason that I apply products like the Auric Glow Last, because uh, it adds a little bit of coverage, a little bit of illumination, a bit of hydration, and it just prepares my skin for a concealer above that. Now, as you guys know, one of my favorite concealers as of late has been the um, First Aid Beauty. For the life of me, I'll probably never remember the name of this brand or this concealer until the very end of my YouTube career or until this is finished, which probably isn't going to take that long. The Bendy Avocado Concealer. I really like this concealer, but this concealer has been discontinued and there isn't as much product in here as there was in the concealer from Clarins. I think the Clarins concealer had a whooping like 15 milliliters, whereas this is like, I don't know, five, five and a half milliliters, not much more than that. And basically I didn't want to find myself in a situation where uh, I have run out of this concealer and I don't have alternatives. So um, I watched a lot of videos, especially from Martina Lilly here on YouTube, because she's uh, somewhat of a expert when it comes to concealer for difficult under eyes. And I kind of like went about it as like what concealer she recommends for someone like me that I can easily get here. Long story short, our local cosmetic store had a sale featuring a bunch of Foreo face masks that I wanted to stock up on. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to order the concealer that they sell and she recommends. And ultimately I came down to this concealer. This is the Lancome Tainted All Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. And the shade I have is 01, or at least here in Europe it is 01. What I found exacerbatingly frustrating with this concealer was figuring out what shade to buy. Because I have no experience with the shade range naming of Lancome, so I didn't really know anything about it. Apparently they also name their shades differently between Europe and the US, so what she mentioned as a number didn't correspond to anything that I could find on our local store. So at some point I was like, well this chick on this blog seems like she has a similar skin tone to mine and she's using this shade. Let's just give it a try. In terms of color, I will show you a little swatch now. What I like about this and what I like about the concealer from uh, First Aid Beauty and I didn't like about the concealer from Clarins. The concealer from Clarins was very light and had slightly like pink tones to it. And I work better with like yellow peach uh, tones because they cancel out the darkness underneath my eyes and they fit with my skin tone a little bit better. So this is the Lancome Tainted All Concealer which I think you can tell has slightly peachy undertones to it. But at the same time it is not 
super brightening for the under eye so i think that's the only thing that i'm a little bit concerned about with this concealer other than that it comes with a doe food um it has a nice like le relatively luxurious packaging and i think it comes with quite a bit of product in here it is there's 13 milliliters so i thought you know what if uh, i'm buying it on sale and it's an expensive concealer I, that i enjoy i might as well have more of it than less so i'm just going to try today and see how this goes it claims to have a bunch of like different qualities to it basically it's like the concealer of your dreams but whether that's really the case we're going to find out in about five seconds because usually if concealers dry out my skin they tend to do it pretty much immediately okay so like i said not really very brightening underneath my eyes it kind of like melts with my own skin tone so i think i would have liked a shade lighter than this right now this is okay as in it's not darker than my skin but it is also not super brightening underneath my eyes okay and in terms of finish this is sitting quite naturally it's not hydrating it's not illuminating it's more like a satin matte which is also i think what they kind of promise you with this concealer uh, i think if i would build it up it would probably cancel out more of the darkness underneath my eyes but honestly i'm really really afraid to build up concealers because i i'm really afraid of dry under eyes so i'm just going to apply the tiniest touch more right here and then just go very gently towards the inner portion of my eye okay for my taste the coverage is pretty okay the finish is okay it did not suck out all the moisture out of my under eye so so far at least in terms of finish it's okay i prefer something a bit more illuminating and a bit more creamy and hydrating but i'm like 95 percent sure that that doesn't even exist i'm going to take the dior backstage foundation now let's continue to do our makeup i'm very curious if you have ever tried this concealer and what you think about it and also if you are aware of you know the unicorn of concealer that i am searching for do let me know i must say we don't have much option here when it comes to brands so don't say any like weird brands that i can only get in the us because that's not going to fly funnily enough when it dries down you can even see that it's a tad peachier and darker than even my foundation which i just applied uh, which is also by the way a bit more on the peachy side that your foundation has a very strong peach undertone to it so far at least in terms of its um finish it's not drying my under eyes which is the best part ever oh i am going to be setting my face with the charlotte tilbury flawless finish something powder for bronzer i'm going to take the unicorn tears from too Faced. Today is going to be an exciting day because Pat is going to finally announce what the inside of Mothership 10 is going to look like and I for one am super pumped to find out. I tried in vain to take screenshots of the inside of the palette because she teased it yesterday and she had the, like the teeniest tiniest moment when someone opened the palette but like even to the best of our abilities and by our abilities i don't mean myself i mean people who have more patience than me who are able to actually snap a screenshot of the inside of the palette she made sure that we can't see much of what's inside the palette it's very funny and she has also learned to blur like all the writing on the uh, outside box because we make screenshots and we read that very quickly for blush i'm going to be taking the blushing delights palette and just the lightest little dab of the little berry shade here I've learned with these blushes, especially with like the two pink, pinker shades, the um, bubblegum pink and this one, that I need to go in with like the lightest little dab in order to be able to um, wear these because they are just so, so incredibly pigmented. But I love the formula so much. It's such a beautiful, lightweight, luminous formula. And I do like the colors, but I have such a hard time applying not too much and i think the other day i finally was able to enjoy the pink blush in here because i applied the tiniest little bit i blended it out and it actually looked really really pretty i think that will do for my highlighter today i'm actually going to grab golden nectar 
Oh, my Golden Moonlight replacement arrived. Let me show it to you. It looks absolutely perfect. Look how gorgeous. I'm in love with this highlighter. Paradise Glow is definitely not something that I needed or that I would deeply regret if I didn't have any more. So the blush duo that I ordered, but the product that I snatched last minute kind of on a whim and I felt really guilty about, the highlighter is really the star of the show for me. Now, like I said, it might be up for debate whether you would agree with me that this is going to be a somewhat more neutral look. But I think ultimately this look is going to be grounded in very neutral tones. Yes, it's a little bit more intense than um, like a light champagne and a little bit of a brown. So if that's the type of look that you were looking for in this um, series, then this is not going to be one of them. But if you were just looking for looks that are different from each other and that will give you a variety of different options in terms of tones but still be grounded in the more like neutral not super crazy colorful a like area then i think this look is going to be something you're really going to enjoy so i'm going to take my hetopian dream palette and we're going to dip into blitz extreme here the multi-chrome shade and i'm going to apply this as a one and done shade all over the lid now when it comes to these multi-chromes i absolutely love both the shades but I adore the tones of Blitz Extreme because of how much more like muted they are. They run from like this copper red to an olive slightly lime green. So they're much more subtle compared to the tones of, for example, VR's Extraterrestrial. I adore VR's Extraterrestrial, but in certain lighting, VR's Extraterrestrial is almost neon. Um, and it has that like bright pink magenta and the forest green and like the lime green in certain lighting. So I wouldn't necessarily say that you can use a shade like that on your lids and get away with calling it neutral. However, this one, I mean, this is so muted. It does have a beautiful formula to it. It's a very like high shine metallic eyeshadow. Sadly, it's not in her VR formula, which I will keep complaining about until the end of time. But... I do really, really like this eyeshadow. I really, really like this eyeshadow. And an eyeshadow like this for me is a one and done shade. There is no need to apply additional shades around it because it already shifts in so many different um, colors that I don't feel like there is any need to apply more colors. I think that just distracts from the eyeshadow. And by the way, if you were wondering, the brush that I'm using is the Worker Pro from Sonia G. I find that brushes like this, which have a little bit of like fluffiness to them, but at the same time are a bit flat, are great for packing eyeshadow and then lightly blending it through the crease. In my inner corners, I'm going to dip back into the Skin Show shade from the Utopian Dream palette and just lightly highlight here the very inner corner of the eye. Again, keeping it quite neutral. And now for the really fun part. If you uh, wanted to give this a tiny bit more sparkle and a tiny bit more of that chartreuse touch to it, you could, and that is what I'm going to do, and go in either your Subversive palette or your Bridgerton 2 palette and grab the little Gigabyte shade over here without going too overboard because you don't want to completely cover this extreme with this shade. But what this will do, just like lightly dabbing it onto the lid and kind of like working it together, with Sextreme, it's going to give like this overlay of this slight olive green tone and in certain lighting it's also going to give a bit more sparkle and it looks absolutely flipping glorious. I have actually worn this look before, that's why I know how it turns out. Uh, but I really really love how these two shades play together and how even so much shifts and such intense eyeshadows. Like if you look at the uh, eyeshadow from the Bridgerton 2 palette, if you were to apply this to full opacity, it is like such a bright lime chartreuse green. Um, it's still not a very colorful eyeshadow, but I don't know that it would be one that you necessarily call neutral. But like this, layered with extreme, I feel like they ground each other in very neutral tones so that a lot of interesting things are happening on your lids, but they are still not crazy colorful and rainbow-esque. On my lower lash line, I'm just going to go back into Sextreme and run that here underneath my uh, lower lashes. 
and that is pretty much going to complete the look in terms of eyeshadow it's a very very simple look but i think it works so well and it looks so beautiful I truly hope this look is translating on camera as beautiful, as stunning as it is in real life because in real life it's this understated yet extremely complex look that will just back so many compliments, I promise you. On my lips I'm wearing an oldie but a goodie. This is the Flesh 6 Lip Gloss Lost Gloss from Pat McGrath Labs. I just think it works really well with the tones of everything else we put on the face and the eyes. Let me know what you thought about this look. Would you say this look is neutral or would you call this a little bit too much? Would this be something that would go into your arsenal of like more wearable, like office friendly looks? Or do you still think it is too much for you? I can't wait to hear your thoughts. I also cannot wait for the reveal of the Mothership 10 this evening. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and this look. Let me know what you thought about it. As usual, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!